Are you looking for a way to decode words and even improve on spelling? Well, in this video, I'm going to take you through word roots levels beginning and level one. So let's begin. Welcome back or welcome if you're new here. I'm Yuri, dentist turned homeschool mom to five kids aged three to 12 years old. But today I am a Roman citizen because we're headed back to our Greek and Latin origins. We're in our ninth year of homeschooling. And now that we're getting closer to those high school years, I felt that we needed to learn more vocabulary just in case some of our kids decide to take college entrance exams in order to get into college. I actually took Latin for three years during high school and was even honored with the summa cum laude. But do I remember much? Unfortunately, not really. While I don't believe that we need to know the grammar of Latin or even know how to speak the language, I do believe that it is really helpful to know a lot of the Latin origins since a lot of our English language stems from the Latin and Greek languages. Knowing the origins of our language can definitely help us figure out the meanings of the words in our language. And of course, a lot of our scientific terminology comes from Latin and also from Greek. So I was thrilled to have learned about word roots from homeschooling YouTubers like myself and the critical thinking company was gracious about sending us the word roots levels beginning and level one for an honest review. And these, this program is intended for grades three to 12 plus. And we have our third grader, our fifth grader and seventh grader trying out word roots this year. The beginning level sells for about $16 and the level one sells for about $27 on Amazon and from the critical thinking company. The pages are perforated so that you can hand out the pages individually or also to make copies easily. around so I can guide you through the books and we'll start with the beginning level. The main author Sherry Plant is a specialist in elementary education and she minored in Latin. She is an etymologist with a passion to help students learn to decode words from what we know about prefixes, suffixes, and root words. So word roots basically teaches the student to analyze words by breaking them down into their Latin and Greek prefixes, roots, and suffixes, which are their most basic elements. And the goal of these authors is that once you know how to decode and break down a word, you will not only become better with vocabulary, you will also improve in comprehension skills and spelling. So here's a table of contents, and you can see that the book is broken up into three sections of exercises, making it a total of 24 lessons, and then ending each section with a little review. And at the very end of the book are the answers. This is a little introduction to word roots, and a little note to the parent or teacher. I like how from the very beginning of the book, words are explained like plants. So words grow from roots and hence the title of the book, Word Roots. So every exercise starts with introducing new prefixes, roots or suffixes. And lesson one is especially focusing on the roots. And then after that, the exercises are followed by activities like, let's see, like matching, and filling in the blank. And the various activities are supposed to help with critical thinking, word recognition, and comprehension. So 
So lesson two focuses on prefixes. And here we have some matching and then defining words on your own by combining the prefixes and the root words and also fill in the blanks. And then lesson three focuses on suffixes. And to us, the meaning of the suffixes were the most challenging and hardest to retain. And the book does a pretty good job categorizing suffixes and even prefixes that mean the same. So for instance, able and ible both mean able to be. Full and er can mean like quality of or state of. So a lot of the suffixes may have similar meanings. But trying to apply the suffix meanings was kind of getting confusing for us. So sometimes we had to sort of disregard the meanings in order for us to figure out and make sense of the words. Next, lesson four deals with prefixes about numbers and the root words cycle, which means circle. Here on this page, you get to number the steps of the life cycle of a frog. Lesson five introduces more prefixes and this time the root word at. So the book continues like this where prefixes, roots, and suffixes are defined, followed by several activities. I was actually surprised that this level is intended for grades three to four because for instance, page 16 through 19 were really challenging, even for me. So trying to figure out which word to use, abrupt or erupt, were a little bit challenging to figure out. And interrupt and disrupted, those were just a little bit challenging, but it was a good exercise anyway. And here the students are supposed to make up sentences using the words from the choice box, but our kids have been skipping those activities, but we may try to tackle some of them eventually. And these suffixes from lesson eight were pretty tricky for us in the meanings. So we had our third and fifth graders working on the program together initially with my guidance, but our third grader needed to slow down. But for a fifth grader, the program seems to be a pretty good challenge, but a pretty good fit as well. It was a bit of a challenge because language arts is not his strength. So lesson eight gets into the roots and suffixes. So again here, some of the suffixes mean the same, which got a little confusing for us sometimes. For instance, graduate and gradient could mean one who steps or that which steps. So that got a little bit confusing until we kind of took a step back to try to understand it. At the end of a set of lessons, there is a review of what had been learned so far. And the kids did great with these two parts. But when we got to part three, where we are supposed to make up our own combination of words, the kids weren't too consistent with being creative and creating words. So we kind of just skipped those pages. So basically the kids preferred the review when there was more direction than having to create our own words. So they liked part one of this review, but skip this part two, and then they completed this part three. Now starting from lesson 12, all three basic elements are introduced and combined. So we have our prefixes, roots, and suffixes coming together. But the activities are pretty similar to when the prefixes were combined with roots and when roots were combined with suffixes. So the book consistently continues like this with activities such as breaking words apart and defining them and filling in the blanks and completing sentences and writing your own sentences.
So here's the next review. Here's the last review section. And the answers. Okay, now we'll move on to level one. So level one is intended for grades five to 12 plus. So our seventh grader has been going through this one, this level completely independently. Here's a table of contents, and it shows that after every two lessons, there's a review. So in this level, a review comes more frequently than they did in the beginning level. This introduction page explains why it's a good idea to break words up into their fundamental elements of the prefixes, roots, and suffixes and also why it's helpful to know the Greek and Latin origins of a word. For example, the ph sound in Greek is spelled P-H, and deca means 10 in Greek, hence where we get decagon and decimal and so on. Level one would like for the student to start with a pretest, but this Pretest also serves as a post test. And it's a fun way to assess how far you progress after going through this program. And a lot of these words, honestly, I couldn't tell you the meanings based on my little knowledge of Latin and Greek, like emissary. I think I know the meaning of it, but I'm, sh I'm not sure how the word is broken down into its smaller elements and what they mean. So this will be a good program for me to go through as well. So if you look in lesson one, unlike the beginning level, level one jumps right into combining all three elements, all three of the elements, the prefixes, roots, and the suffixes together. So we move right into defining the words based on what we know from what we have learned up here. And here in part B, we get to complete sentences choosing one of these three word options. And then we define the words on this page. And then the next part, part D, is about writing sentences using the words. And finally, there's some creative writing, which the beginning level doesn't include. There's no creative writing in the beginning level, but it's also optional in the level one. And level two is the same exact format as level one. And then after we go through that lesson, you're going to have your review where you get to define word parts using the words in the word bank and then match the definitions of the words. Here you get to unscramble words. I can see that that could help with strengthening your spelling skills. The next part of the review involves filling in the blanks using the best word to complete the sentences. So from here on, every two lessons look similar to that, where there are two lessons and then there's a review that follows. So level one has 30 lessons. So for a roughly 34 week school year, students should be able to complete one lesson per week. And you could make it a four or five day program if you do one part of the five sections of a lesson per day. And remember that the part E is the creative writing and that part is optional. So you could pretty much do a part of a lesson every day, but our 12 year old would try to knock out an entire lesson in one sitting. Level one is a much thicker book. I would say compared to the beginning level, which is about, I would say about 100 pages. Level one 
is about 195 pages. Here's the answer key at the end. So they made it really clear and easy for a student to be able to do this program totally independently. And at the very end, there's even a dictionary that will help with the pronunciation of words. And a good way to group, you know, the Latins that we have learned through this book. pretty good. It is a little advanced for our third grader, but she's going through the program at her own pace. But for our fifth and seventh graders, the program seems to be a pretty good fit. Our seventh grader has tried Wordly Wise and Evan Moore for vocabulary, and she has voiced that she does not like Wordly Wise, and she thought that Evan Moore was okay. But she's telling me that Word Roots is pretty good. So to me, that says a lot because she will tell me exactly what she thinks. And when it comes to curriculum, she is very clear to the point and blunt to the core. Those other programs like Worldly Wise and Evan Moore were great for a lot of families, but they just weren't working for our family, well, at least for our daughter, our seventh grade daughter. I hope this was a helpful look inside Word Roots. So far, we really like the program and hope to continue with it. If you have any questions or have any feedback on your own encounter with Word Roots, please share. If, and if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, we'd love for you to follow along. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope to share about another critical thinking company resource in the near future, so stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Is that? Huh? <laughs> okay.